Hi everyone, and welcome to this video, Intro to Parabolas, First and Second Differences. We're going to first look at the basic parabola, and then we're going to look at what first and second differences are and how we calculate those. And so the first thing we want to do is look at the equation y equals x squared. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward parabola, but if you haven't thought about it before, you might wonder how you actually get the values. Well, we can always make a table of values to graph something we've never graphed before. Once we know how to graph it, we should use that method, but for now we can use a table of values. And so I'm going to list the x values and the y values, and I'm going to start the S val x values at uh, positive 3, and I'm going to go down to 0, and then continue going down all the way to negative 3. And if you think about this, if we put 3 into this equation, 3 squared, well that would give us 9. So in this first case, when x is 3, y is 9. If we put 2 squared into the equation, it would give us 4. If we put 1 squared into the equation, it would clearly give us 1. If we put 0 squared into the equation, that would give us 0. And where some people make some mistakes is when we put negatives in. A negative in brackets squared is a positive again. Likewise, negative 2 squared is 4, and negative 3 squared is 9. And so what you hopefully can tell is that what we're doing is we're going down and then we're going back up again as we go through here. So uh, the same pattern is repeating itself a couple of times uh, going down and then we reach what's called the vertex and then we go back up again. And so if we plot all these points starting at uh, 3, 9, 3, 9 is that point right there, 2, 4 is that point, uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, and then we have the same thing on the other side because every parabola has symmetry we can see that the points on the left side are the same y values as the ones on the right side and then all we need to do is plot a line through those points and this is y equals x squared i want to look at one other equation here and that is the equation of the graph y equals 2 times x squared now if i again make my t chart i'm going to go x and y I'm going to just go from 2, you're going to see the pattern, how that works. Um, and then if I put 2 squared in, we get 2 times 4, which is 8. If I put 1 squared in, we get 2 times 1, which is 2. If I put 0 squared in, hopefully you can see that that's going to be 2 times 0, which is 0. And it's interestingly enough, I'm going to do these over here, but if I put y equals 2 times um, negative 1 squared in, that's going to be equal to 2 times positive 1, because negative 1 squared is positive 1, so that's going to be equal to 2. And if I put y equals 2 times negative 2 squared in here, it's again 4 times 2, which is 8. So what I'm going to get is 8, 2, 0, 2, and 8. And if we plot those points, we're going to go ahead and graph 2, 8. That's a point up here. We're going to graph uh, 1, 2, uh, 0, 0, and then because of symmetry, we already can hopefully tell what the other ones are on the other side. And so it's really much the same as the other one, but with one key distinct difference, and that is that the y values have all been doubled. We vertically stretch this as we're going to investigate over the days to come. Those are the two graphs that just give us a basis of what these look like. Now let's go ahead and do some things with first and second differences. First differences we have experience with likely from last year. And it says first differences is the difference between consecutive, one after the other, consecutive, consecutive y values in a table of values with evenly spaced x values. So it's the consecutive y values. So we're not subtracting the difference between the x values. Ideally, that x value difference is consistent anyway, because we might be going up by 1 and the x values are by 2. Um, but the y values are what is going to be really important here. The first differences are constant if we have a linear relation. That's what we discovered in grade 9. Second differences is the difference between consecutive first differences. So we take those first differences and we subtract those ones. For a quadratic relation, second differences are constant. So the second differences are going to be the same if it is in fact quadratic. There are a couple of terms that you may have 
become familiar with from what we've seen so far, but just to define them clearly here, the first one is the vertex. And the vertex is the highest or lowest point on a parabola. So what that physically looks like is if it's a parabola that opens down, we call this, then that's going to be the point. If it's a parabola that opens up, then that would be the point. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the vertex over which the parabola is reflected. A vertical line that passes through the vertex over which the parabola is reflected. In other words, from this diagram, if we have a parabola, the axis of symmetry is going to be smack in the middle. And so if you take one half of the parabola and we put a mirror where that axis of symmetry is, we'd look in the mirror and we'd see the other half of the parabola. So let's look at some, some examples of calculating these first and second differences. First example says this. Consider the relation y equals 2x minus 4. Complete the tables of values and the first differences for y equals 2x minus 4. Well, this is something we graphed in grade 9. And we know that if we put negative 2 into this equation, we would get negative 2 times negative 2, which would be negative 4, minus 4, which would be negative 8. Now, this graph, this uh, heading should be just y. And so this would be the negative, negative 8 is what we get there. If we put in negative 1 here, we would get negative 1, 2 times negative 1 minus 4, and that would give me uh, negative 2 minus 4, which would be negative 6. And if we continue that pattern on, the next one would be 2 times 0 minus 4, well that's negative 4. The next one would be 2 times 1 minus 4, well that's negative 2, and 2 times 2 minus 4 is 0. And what we would do is we would say, well the first difference is, and this is really important that you get the order correct, it's the later value minus the previous value, negative 6 minus negative 8. So in other words, it's negative 6 plus 8. That's 2. And then what we see here is we do the next one, negative 4 minus negative 6. Negative 4 minus negative 6 is negative 4 plus 6. That's 2 again. Negative 2 minus negative 4, negative 2 plus 4, it's 2 again. 0 minus negative 2 is 0 plus 2, which again equals 2. And so if we were to answer part B now, it says, what do the first differences tell you about the relation? Well, that tells us, and we knew this hopefully because we recognized it was in y equals mx plus b as well, but it tells us based on just the first differences that it must be linear because the first differences are constant. If we were to graph this relation, we could graph it with those points, or we could graph it with the equation itself. Hopefully you remember how to do it with the equation itself. Uh, y equals mx plus b. The first thing we do is we start with the y-intercept. It's negative 4. And then the slope is 2. And so to graph that, we start with the y-intercept of negative 4. And then the slope is 2, and that's over 1. So it's up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And then we go ahead and we grab our line of best fit. And we draw a line of best fit through those points, which should go through all those points, ideally. And it's going to look something like that. And so that's the, that's the line y equals 2x minus 4. Well, that's a linear relationship. Let's consider a parabola. Here we have the parabola y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. And we want to make a table of values, find the first and second differences, and then we want to ask what they tell us about the parabola. And then we'll graph it at the end. The first thing we want to do is fill this in based on the uh, based on the given x values. And so in this first case, y equals negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Well, that gives me 4 plus 4 minus 3. 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 3 is positive 5 is the y value here. And so continue that pattern on, fill in that chart, and then I'll come back and help with the first and second differences in a minute. So filling that chart in, that's what you should have got. If for some reason you made a, a mistake, you could always write out one more step here. For example, 
uh, let's take when y when x equals three, you could say three squared. You could write that as a nine minus six minus three, and that will make it more clear that you get zero for your answer. So now let's talk about the first and second differences. It's always the later one minus the previous one. So this is zero minus five, not five minus zero. Don't be that person that mixes it up and gets all your answers wrong because of it. It's always the second one minus the previous one. Zero minus five is negative five. Negative three minus zero is negative three. Negative four minus negative three is negative one. Negative three minus negative four is like negative three plus four, which is positive one. Um, write that clearly, hopefully. Uh, and then zero minus negative three, that's zero plus three, which is three. And then five minus zero is clearly five. Well, the first differences are not the same as we would expect. And so let's go to the second differences and check these. Negative three minus negative five. That's negative three plus five. That's two. The next one, negative one minus negative three. Negative one plus three, also two. Next one is one minus negative one, which is one plus one, which is two. And then hopefully it gets really clear now because we have no negatives to deal with. It's three minus one is two and five minus three, which again is two. And so what we can tell is that since the second differences were constant, but not the first differences, since the second differences were constant, therefore it must be a quadratic relationship. Sometimes use the three dots to mean therefore. Now the nice thing about this is you also have the equation. So we knew just by looking at the equation that because the largest power on x was this squared that it had to be quadratic. But if you weren't given that and you all you were given was the x and y values, this is how you do it to discover if it's quadratic or not. Let's go ahead and graph this based on the data that we have. So we're going to use the x values and the corresponding y values. So we're going to start at negative 2, 5, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4, and then we end up repeating that as we go back up again. As you can see there, we go up back up to 5. So when the x value is 4, the y value is 5. And so this is the parabola. y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. This last example is one I want you to try on your own. And as you do the question, I want you to pause the video, and then the answer will be up here after you're done, when you, after you've done the question, and you unpause the video, and you play it again, and you can check to see how you did. So hopefully you've got the same answers that I've highlighted there. If you didn't, go back and, and correct your work. It's worth making sure you're getting correct now. You don't want to have this continue to uh, balloon throughout the unit. Notice that there's a couple of things worth considering here. Uh, one thing to, worth considering is that not all the numbers end up being pretty every time. But the other thing worth considering is that after four seconds, that ball, assuming that there's you're not hitting it off of a cliff, that ball's hit the ground. Because once it hits a height of zero, we would assume that the ball is back on the ground again. And so these last, after four, five, and six seconds, that really doesn't apply in this situation. We could, we'll learn in the next unit, how to find that exact moment when the ball does hit the ground, and we would stop uh, using the parabola to model it after that time. Nonetheless, though, we see that the second differences are all negative 10, so it has to be sh flying in the shape of a parabola. When you go to graph this, I'd recommend that you consider what your maximum is, how high it goes, and how much time you have. And what I've done is I've set my axes in such a way that I'm going up by twos on my by two on my y-axis and by 0.5 on my x-axis. Now, when you graph this, you should get something that looks like this. Again, you're drawing a sketch through those points, but notice that the maximum is going to be somewhere a little bit higher than 18.75. And the reason for that is because we have two points at 18.75. Only one point can be the highest point, and it has to be exactly in the middle of that. And you'll notice again here that it's going to hit the ground somewhere around there. And so we're asked to answer D and E, and D says what's the height of the T box? Well, the height of the T box is 8.75 meters, because that's how high it starts from. You're 8.75 meters above the ground. And then how long will it take the rock to reach the bottom of the cliff? Well, it'll take about 3.7 seconds. So to wrap this up is the summary. If a relation is linear, the first differences are equal. 
If it's quadratic, the second differences are equal. And if neither the first or second differences are equal, it's neither linear or quadratic.